يا عين فيض الله والعرفان يسعى إليك الخلق كالغمآن يا بحر فضل المنعم المنان تهبي إليك الزمر بالكيزان I've always been fascinated by the fact that even though people belong to many different faiths, yet there are things that are surprisingly common between all world religions. One thing that has always sparked my interest is that nearly all world religions speak of the advent of a Messiah in the latter days. If we look at the major world religions, like for example Christianity, most of them believe that Jesus Christ would be coming in these latter days and they believe also that uh, with the coming of Jesus Christ the kingdom of God will get nigh too. Hindus are waiting for their Krishna and Buddhists they are expecting the arrival of their Buddha. Muslims are waiting for their Mahdi and Messiah, Christians are waiting for Jesus Christ and uh, the Jews are also waiting for the same glory of their religion to come back which they earlier achieved during the time of David and Solomon, I mean Hazrat Dawud and Hazrat Suleiman So this is a common factor which is found among all the religions. It always got me thinking that if a Messiah was to come for every religion, each bringing his own teachings all at the same time, that would definitely be a recipe for mass confusion all over the world, unless every religion was referring to the event of the one and the same person. Now that would definitely unite all faiths. Well, there are some similarities between the Christian and the non ahmadi Muslim concept of Jesus alayhi salam. That is to say, they both believe that Jesus alayhi salam is still alive and he ascended to heaven and he would return one day in order to unite the whole of mankind. But there is a prime difference between these two beliefs. The Christians, they believe that when Jesus Christ comes back, he will bring back the kingdom of God. So according to the Muslim, that kingdom of God will appear in this way, that those who are not Muslim, they will be killed and annihilated. You know, Muslim concept of Jesus alayhi salam, he doesn't forgive or he doesn't have any compassion. If you're not a Muslim, they think that you are dead. I'm not exaggerating. It's not exaggeration at all. These but are all concepts prevailing in the Muslim society. If you are not a believer, if you are a disbeliever, then you are dead. And this is what actually Orthodox Muslim believe and this is what is, what is commonly known to them. There is a saying of the Holy Prophet وسلم, where he mentions that there will be a time when the Holy Quran will be so misinterpreted that Islam would have departed this earth to the farthest edges of the universe. And truly, to believe that a prophet of God has ascended to the heavens and will return only to massacre those who chose to believe different is an outrageous belief that could be attributed to the Holy Quran. <laughs> Nowhere in the Quran it is mentioned that Hazrat Isa salam physically went to the heaven. And because his going is not mentioned that he went there, it is also not mentioned that he will come back physically. To understand this thing, when we read Quran and also Ahadith, the concept of mercy and Mahdi is totally opposite to that what normally non ahmadi muslim believe and this was actually the state of muslims in the colonial british india which somehow or the other became a kind of battleground for the religions you know because all of them were present there major world religions like christians and muslims and hindus all of them were active at the same time and this was the state of the muslims in the colonial british india which was becoming a battleground for religious conversion. And unfortunately, the Muslims were the ones who were losing badly. With the East India Trading Company came a host of Christian missionaries hoping to convert the Indian population to Christianity. 
and a lot more followed as soon as India became a British colony. The Christian missionaries had a straightforward argument that, Nauzubillah, your prophet is dead. But as you believe, Jesus is still alive and he is the source of salvation for all mankind. Become Christians instead. And unfortunately, this was working really well for the Christian missionaries. Due to the misinterpretation of the Holy Quran and Ahadis, Muslims in the subcontinent, they generally believed that Jesus السلام, is still alive and he's, he's gone to heavens and he's going to come back. The Muslims believed that Jesus Christ will come back physically. So the Christian missionaries were able to convert the Muslims toward Christianity with the same argument that they believed uh, that Jesus Christ will come back. So it will be Jesus Christ who will bring back the kingdom of God and not the Holy Prophet of Islam. So this made the Muslims are doubtful about their religion. So therefore they were converted to Christianity in a large number. And if it were not for divine intervention, Islam would have been lost in that part of the world. If faith were to go up to the Pallades, a man from among the Persians would surely find it. Islam had indeed left this earth. And according to the prophecy of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and the Holy Quran, a Messiah and Mahdi indeed came to the salvation of Muslims. He came in the person of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad alayhi salatu wa salam. So this was the time for the coming of the Messiah. All the signs had appeared and it was Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad alayhi salam who truly defended the honor of the Holy Quran through divine guidance and indeed bring it back from the Pleiades. This was the time of the prominent Messiah والسلام, and all the signs were there. It was Hazrat Masih Ma'ud whose advent took place and he was appointed by God and he did a lot of services to Islam. One of the biggest thing, one of the major thing, one of the unique thing the promised Messiah والسلام, did, he corrected the ideology, the doctrine, the understanding of the verses of the Holy Quran and also of the verses of the Bible regarding the life and the death of Jesus, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. The non-Ahmadis, they always uh, use a verse of the Holy Quran and instead of giving the true meaning of that verse, they give the quite op opposite meaning of that verse. And that is uh, where Jesus Christ um, is reported to have said in the Holy Quran. And I was a witness over them as long as I remained among them. But since thou didst cause me to die, thou hast been the watcher over them, and thou art witness over all things. What actually is going on in this verse is that on the day of judgment, Allah Almighty is asking Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu waslam, about his performance, about his people. And he is simply replying in a very simple way that since I was among them, I was trying my level best. And when I was departed from them, I died. I was not responsible for them, but in fact, oh my beloved Allah, you were responsible for them. So this verse was used by the non-Ahmadi Muslims in order to um, prove the ascension of Jesus Islam. And they would interpret the word tawafi to mean uh, to physically raise. But this is completely unfounded, this translation. 
In this verse, the word of a faith and is actually misinterpreted by the non Ahmadi Muslims. Uh, they believe that the wafaytani here means that when you took me up or when you raised me up physically, but actually this meaning is baseless. Here this word means when you give me death, when you caused me to die. Because in many other parts of the Holy Quran, the word the wafaytani has come to mean in the meanings of or, or, or it is taken as the meaning of the death. قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ Say, the angel of death will cause you to die. Even in this verse, the word tawafi is used referring to the death. The promised Messiah Islam proved that Hazrat Isa Islam died a natural death. As well as this, he proved that all prophets before him also died a natural death and not a single person before him had ever been given everlasting life. Muhammad is only a messenger. Verily, all messengers have passed away before him. If then he die or be slain, will you turn back on your heels? We granted not everlasting life to any human being before thee. The promised Messiah والسلام, worked diligently to defend Islam and to rekindle the flame of faith that had been snubbed by ignorance. It is quite remarkable that a misinterpretation on the death of Jesus السلام, could have such a profound effect on the faith that it nearly uprooted the very foundations of Islam. But it also had a hidden, more sinister and terrifying danger. Promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wa salam, has said, A Jain or a Buddhist is afraid of and avoids killing even a mosquito or a flea. But alas, there are many among us Muslims who, while they kill an innocent man or commit wanton murder, are not afraid of the powerful God. The popular view of jihad prevalent among Muslims, that is, the expectation of a bloody Imam, full of spite and hostility for other people, is a texture of false beliefs inculcated by short-sighted ulama. This was what was actually stated by the promised Messiah a hundred years ago. And if you look around, this is what is happening exactly nowadays. No, he, at that time he brought it into the notice of British government at that time that the doctrine, these mullahs, they are uh, uh, trying to instill into the minds of the innocent Muslims especially their children, that uh, a bloody Mahdi and Messiah will appear in this world and he will annihilate all the non-Muslims and he will destroy those who are not prepared to accept Islam. As a matter of fact, these things, they, you know, they had polluted the minds of the innocent children right from the very beginning. And when these children, they grew up, it became their doctrine that uh, killing in the cause of uh, killing the innocent people, even though uh, it may be for the religion, it is a very meritorious deed and by doing this they will be going to the paradise. And they are the major reason for destruction and they are the killer of peace from the world today. Muslims are taught right from the beginning, right from the youth of a Messiah who would come one day and he would bathe the world in the blood of disbelievers. And when this teaching manifests itself within these youth, as they grow older, 
one day they become ready in order to take the lives of innocent women and children and they think this is the service of Islam. So we must thank Allah the Almighty that He has allowed us to accept the promised Messiah alayhi salam and in this manner He saved us from this grave sin. The promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam's service to humanity and Islam is staggering. But here is just one example of his many services to Islam by showing us the true interpretation of Jesus والسلام, The promised Messiah والسلام, saved the Muslims from doing shirk or association with God. The promised Messiah والسلام, saved the Muslims from this false belief which is also blasphemous to believe that Jesus والسلام, who is an Israelite prophet he would come back to save the Ummah of the Holy Prophet وسلم, who is also the seal of all the Prophets. We call ourselves Muslims and we must look at the meaning of Islam and Islam means peace and submission to the will of Allah. So this is exactly what we practice. We try and win the hearts of people through peaceful means, through peaceful words. Uh, we must be very grateful to the Promised Messiah who gave us this teaching of living in peace with the rest of the world. And this is what we are born for, that we should spread peace through our own peaceful action. And our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is a messenger of peace. The Khulafa of Hazrat Promised Messiah والسلام, he gave us this idea that there is one motto that we have to follow which is unmatchable, that is love for all, hatred for none. There are still some questions, aren't there? If Jesus والسلام, did not die on the cross and he was not raised to the heavens, then where did he go? What happened to him? Did he fulfill his mission? To find out all of that and much, much more, read this book, Jesus in India, by the Promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam. Na kisi aur ka vakt Vakt tha vakt e masiha Na kisi aur ka vakt Maina aata to Ta